I'm not ashamed. Who are more blessed according to Jesus in Luke 11? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Luke on Walking Through the Bible. Of his word, the glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Luke chapter 11. We're going to be reading from verses 24 to 28. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Luke chapter 11, beginning at verse 24. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finding none. He says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he find it, finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. And it happened, as he spoke these things, that a certain woman from the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you, and the breasts which nursed you. But he said, More than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. In our last lesson, we had Jesus being accused of casting out demons by the power of Beelzebub or the power of Satan. Jesus showed the people the absurdity of this statement, for why would Satan cast out his own agents? For that would make his kingdom weaker. No, Jesus was casting out demons by the power of God, which proved that what he was teaching about the coming kingdom was the word of God. Moreover, as Jesus was casting out demons, he was binding the strong man. He was binding Satan's power. So that people after that time, when miracles performed by men ceased at the end of the first century, men would no longer be plagued by demon possession, but could of their own free will obey or disobey God. Verses 24 to 28 belong to the same context of verses 14 to 23, with Jesus explaining something more about demons. The Jews believe that demons possess the deserted places. Whether this was actually true is immaterial to this discussion. We just need to know that the Jews believe this. So Jesus used this belief to make his point. When a demon is cast out, he goes to deserted places to find rest, but he finds none. He then returns to what he was cast out of, and with seven of his friends possessed the man again, making the man's situation worse than before. Jesus' point? He went out preaching the gospel and casting out demons, and the apostles would soon follow. This would cause belief in the gospel to spread in Israel. However, the nation as a whole would later turn against the gospel. In other words, the demons or evil would return. Israel would become unbelievers and their city would be destroyed. The situation would be worse than before because rejecting the gospel meant they could no longer serve God, for God would only accept service through his Son, Jesus Christ. What a sobering thought for Jesus to give the Jews, and one we need to heed today, lest we find ourselves in the same situation. Verses 27 and 28 are in response to everything Jesus had done on this occasion. A woman called out and exclaimed to Jesus, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast that nursed you. We do not know who this woman was because Luke neither gives us the setting nor the name of this woman. However, because Jesus was providing the word of God, this woman was happy and therefore was calling on God to bless Mary, the mother of Jesus, for without her, Jesus wouldn't be there. What this woman says sounds a lot like what Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, said in Luke 1, 41 and 42, where we read, And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, that the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. It also fulfills the prophecy found in the Song of Mary, where in Luke 1, 48, we read, For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant, for behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. So even though Luke adding these words to his gospel seemed to be out of no importance at all, other, to, other than to express the thoughts of this woman, they hold great significance because they draw us back to the beginning of this book and what was spoken of before Jesus was born. Jesus' response to the woman was, More than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. At first glance, Jesus' response may look like a correction to what the woman had just said, but it is not. He did not want to remove the blessing from his mother, as if she was undeserving of God's blessings. He, however, did want to place the people's focus ultimately in the proper place. They were not to worship his mother Mary. Bless her, be thankful for her carrying and raising the boy Jesus, yes, but worship her, no. Worship belonged to God. But Mary simply raising Jesus to adulthood wouldn't save a person's soul from hell. They had to hear the words of Jesus, which were the word of God, and do them or keep them. Simply hearing the message of Jesus was not enough. One actually had to understand what Jesus was teaching, and one actually had to obey. Today there is people who teach that all one has to do to be saved is believe in Jesus. Believe in what he did for you in dying on the cross. 
While believing in Je what Jesus accomplished on the cross, which is paying the price for sin, must certainly be believed and accepted by those who wish to be saved, is that all Jesus taught? No, he taught about repentance and baptism too. He taught about loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself. He taught about the church, the kingdom, and how people need to enter into it. While obeying God does not earn our salvation, it is required in order for us to have faith in God and receive his grace. Let nobody tell you that salvation is by faith alone, for it is not. We receive God's grace when we in faith obey Jesus and what he taught while he, while he was here on this earth and later through the apostles and inspired writers of the New Testament. That is why the one who is more blessed is the one who hears God's word and keeps it, for that person will receive the greatest blessing of all, eternal life with God forever. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord will hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Luke chapter 11, verses 29 to 36, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.